Good evening, students. Today we're going to take a look at Unit 7, Lesson C, Constructing a Table. The objective, at the end of this section, you should be able to say, I can construct a table of values with and without technology. The vocabulary from the section, the first is table of values. And it's just a listing of the values of the function. It shows you in kind of a chart form what are the x values and what are the y values that are associated with your function. Some key terms to remember, as we saw in previous sections, the domain is going to always represent your x values. And the range is always going to represent your y values. So domain is your x's, range is your y values. So let's take a look at our first example. It says given the function f of x equals 3x minus 4, and the domain, negative 2, 0, 2, create a table of values. So here's our table. I am told that the domain is negative 2, 0, 2. Now we know that the domain represents our x's. So I'm going to label this my x column, and then I'm going to put in those values. Negative 2 and 0 and 2. Now what I have to do is find the corresponding y values. Now if we look, f of x is different notation. This f of x is just a fancy way to say y. It means the same thing. But by using the function notation, we can actually see what we're substituting in for the x value. So if I come over here and I write f of x equals 3x minus 4. Notice I left out the x's because those are my inputs. That's where I'm going to put my domain. So the first domain value, first x value I have is negative 2. So this says if I put negative 2 into the function, what's the output? So this, this part right here doesn't have anything to do with your calculation per se. It's just saying here's the function and here's the number I'm substituting in. So I go to my actual function and wherever I saw an x, I'm now going to replace it with a negative 2. And then we just crunch those numbers. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10. So when I put in a negative 2, my output is negative 10. So I know that y values are my output or my range, and the output associated with negative 2 is negative 10. Then I repeat the process. So I have my function f of x equals 3 times x minus 4. Notice I left out the x's because in place I'm going to put in a 0. So if I substitute in 0 for my x, that's telling me I'm going to substitute in 0 for my x. Here's where I actually do it. 3 times 0 is 0, minus 4 is negative 4. So when x is 0, the output is negative 4. And then finally, we repeat the process one more time for positive 2. So I have my function f of x equals 3x minus 4. But instead of the x, I want to put in a positive 2. So I take out the x, and this tells me, okay, you're going to put in 2 in place of it. I go and do the calculations. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 4 is 2. So we get positive 2 here. Okay? So it's just substituting in the domains for your x's. Crunching the numbers, calculating to figure out the y value, which is your output, which again is your range. There's a you try, so you'll do that in class tomorrow. There's a couple of them. If you turn to the next page, now it says create a table of values with, oops, sorry, with technology. So now what we're going to do is use the calculator. So it says if you tell the calculator what your function is, it will generate a table of values for you. The calculator will actually make the chart for you. So step one says press the Y equals button and enter your function. So on that little button, you want to write for yourself Y equals. Because that's how you tell the calculator, hey, get ready, I'm going to put a function in. So if I move over here to my calculator, I can press Y equals. And then you should get this menu on your screen. Then that's where you'll enter your function. Step two will then be to press blank, blank, and the calculator will show you the table of values for the function you entered. And those two buttons are second, so the second button, and then the y equals button again. 
So let's take a look at the example. It says, given the function f of x equals 4x plus 5, create a table of values for the domain negative 2, 0, 2. So here's my domain. I know those are my x's, so I'm going to go to my table and say, okay, here's my x's, negative 2, 0, 2. Now I want to find the y values. Now up above, we learned how to do this by hand, so we could calculate the numbers if we wanted to, but it's a, a valuable tool to see how the calculator can do this for you. So if I go up, it says, press y equals and enter your function. So I already pressed y equals. Now I'm going to enter the function, and my function is 4x plus 5. So I've entered my function. Then step two says press second y equals. So the second button is this one over here, second. Oops, my bad. Go back, time out. This should say second graph. I'm thinking of something else. So press it out. My mistake. This should say second graph. So second graph is what I really want to do. Second graph, because notice up above the graph button it says the word table. So when I press that, Notice it gives me a table of values. When x is 0, y is 5. When x is 1, x is 9, and so on. So all I have to do then is find the values that we were looking for over here in my table. And if you don't see it, this goes to 0. If I want to go up higher, meaning I want to find those negative numbers, all I have to do is press the up arrow and I can move through my table. So I can see that when x is negative 2, y is negative 3. So I go to my table. These are the y values. When x is negative 2, y is negative 3. Now I want to know when x is 0. So I go back to my calculator and see, okay, when x is 0, y is 5. So I can just go ahead and write that in. And then finally I want to know when x is 2. So I go back to my calculator. When x is 2, y is 13. So I can then put that into my table. So where we were doing all the side work by hand in the previous examples, the calculator is doing all of that for you. So you go to y equals and enter your function, so whatever your function is. Then you press second graph, make sure you made that change. Second graph, and that'll pop up your table. And then you'll just have to find the values that you're being asked to find. So look for the domain pieces that they give you and then find their corresponding range values. Right? And then there's a couple of those that you'll try tomorrow in class. Um, notice in this one there's an x squared. And in this one we have absolute value. And there's a function in your calculator where you can put that in. So you'll maybe have to ask your teacher about that when you're going over it tomorrow in class. Right? As always, after watching this video you want to write down the things that you can do. After watching the videos you want to write down anything that you still don't know how to do or that you still aren't quite sure about or didn't understand. And then to help yourself, you could rewatch the video, ask a friend, ask a question in class, go to the Math Resource Center, search the topic on the internet. All right, that's all for today. Have a good night.